是一部。Hey, lovely, and welcome back. My name is Confidence Luo. I am your hair subject matter expert. So today we'll be working on a frontal wig that、um, we'll be using French curly extension. So let's go. This is one pack, two pack, three packs, four packs, five packs, and the one had already opened. So this is total of six packs. Okay, I want to jump right into how to. Handle this extension.、Um, this is a it's a power pack video. There's a, a a lot when it comes to working with French curly extension. I just had to, you know, do all I could to put all the information in one video, even though they are short. Please, okay. So first of all, there's a rubber band wrapped around the neck. You just want to take that out, and then there's another rubber band used as a divide. Okay, so you want to look for the exact divide. Make sure the extension is not crossing, um, is not um overlaying the rubber band. You want to make sure the rubber band is free of anything like that, and then use your magic um serum. This is from Mega Growth. You can always ask for Mega Growth serum. It's good for even straightening your your man hair. So you want to have this in your palm while you detangle and unravel this unit. Walk your hands through it until it is frizz-free and、um, no longer、um, twisting towards one side. And then you want to take the quantity you need for. So when you take this rubber band out, please notice something. This is the divide. This is where the rubber band was removed from. That should be the place you're working with as your into two. You know, if you're working with an extension, you fold it into right. Make sure that is your middle when you fold it into. Do not mix it up. I repeat, do not mix it up. Sometimes, when you take off the rubber band, does not actually give you into two. One side is usually longer, but don't try to make it into two because this unit is. Um, the cuticles are folded in a particular way. If you mix the, if you mix up the curls, if you mix up the pattern, you're going to affect the end result. Okay. That being said, let's go into braiding. I am not doing knotless braids here because the extension I used in ventilating this frontal is quite slippery, and then this extension itself is quite slippery. So I cannot come and spend ten thousand years doing knotless braids on both slippery extensions. So I just took a little and started like a normal braid, and then I'm going, I'm going to fade into other parts, so that the down is not so bulky. You understand? So I'm not starting everything at once. I took like、um, three parts, and then I divided one part to start with as a normal extension, and then I fade in the remaining two parts. I hope that's clear. So you just, I'm going to explain what my middle finger is doing. Your middle finger is very important when you're working with whether Ghana weaving or anything, but for this extension, this extension it is mostly needed. You need to practice how to press down what you're working with, with your middle finger, no matter what you're doing. For those of you who say Ghana weaving is painful, if you know how to press down with your middle finger while pressing while breathing, it's less painful. Okay, so now watch me have some extension in my hand. And then just walk my hands through the section I'm working with. Do not carry the entire pack and be taking from while you breed. Okay, just take a little section like this, and、um, have the the、um, serum in your palm, and walk your fingers through it. You can see it freeze free. Okay, and then you want to walk your finger through it, and then take the quantity you need for a particular braid, and let's go. Now look at that fold. Do not mix it up. See that fold? Do not mix it up. I'll show you something right now while breathing. How I control not mixing it up. I'll divide into one side is a little smaller, and then I fold. 
making sure the even the fold is at the spot where i took the rubber band out and even when i'm feeding in the others i'm also making sure i'm not mixing up that fold so having a great result at the end of the day takes you a lot of calculations a lot of professionalism if you're working with this extension so watch what i'm going to be doing when i release my hand yeah that piece i just touched you can see is the fold and the while before i finish braiding i drag it a little to fit in perfectly let's watch for the second one when i'm crossing i'm not using the spot of the fold directly i'm going to leave a little which is that so while i'm braiding it's going to drag it in a little and then I have my perfect fold at the perfect spot. Then you just want to braid it in, pressing down with your middle finger. Can you see what my middle finger is doing? Also note that after sectioning my hair, I stay at the back to braid, not directly at the side. I tilt myself to the back a little bit. To braid so when you're taking it as all back it just flows to the back when you want to fold it to the side it just flows to the side okay so let me show you how i do my knotting and then i'll show you in another place when to do the knotting okay i'm trying to jump back a lot of information in just one short video this is three strands i am using and learn save this video and learn my knotting pattern i think in my entire life as a uh, a stylist, I've only seen two other persons who are actually related to me and myself, knotting hair like this. Let me know in the comment section if that's how you knot. But I tell you, it's the best pattern of knotting. On to the next one. Now, notice something. In between this line, I have two braids. In between the next line, I have two braids. In the next clip, I'll be showing you why i do that and how i do that okay let's just take this braid to the end and here we go um how do i go about it and why do i do it you can see in between this line it doesn't flow directly to the back there is two strands of hair blocking the Okay, so you can see it. Now, first of all, how do I do it? I take a little slant line. Just very small. And then I'll section it, making sure I have two in between each straight line. So assuming I have um, 10 braids on one side, I'm going to end up having... Uh, up to 20 of this lying against the strap okay so i'm going to take a little extension that is the color of the extension i'm using but this one is not exactly this is um, white and then i'll fix it behind the our strap that's where the frontal ended and then i'll smoothen smoothen the braid the hair we are using for the braiding across the strap joining it with the external attachment i fixed at the back and use it to make one braid now if i want to pack my hair um half up half down i don't want you to look at me from afar and know that it's a frontal wig i'm wearing okay you need to be able to come close and then calculate your head a lot to say okay this is the frontal now when you do this it kind of cover the straps number one and number two you cannot expressly tell just at a glance that this is a frontal wig because it gives like an extended illusion do you understand yeah it gives like an extended illusion okay this brush is leading somewhere this is not the end of do you understand because so this is what i do and i'm just going to braid
while you're braiding, try to hide the external braiding hair and then your the one you're using as your base because this is no matter the color, try to hide your base whenever you're braiding for durability purposes. Okay, so we're just going to go in and braid. Okay, so you know, see, I uh, I felt a freeze in my hand, so I just take a little of this um, serum and run my hand through each section like so. Just keep the freeze at bay. The extension should never go rough. Again, I'll teach you how to make the knots. This is two strands. Oh, while I was dropping it, I lost one strand, so I added another one. This is two strands, but I'm going to be using three. So let's add one more. This is three. And then you just want to, I can't explain this process. Just watch what I'm doing. Save this video and practice. If you don't know how to do your knotting like this, it's different from any other pattern of knotting that you have to finish and then go to the side and re -knot. And then that's the strand you use for the knotting is now a separate entity from your entire braid. You understand what I'm talking about? Like it, it stands on its own like I'm not part of this family. <laughs> okay, let's just go in and section. First of all, of course, when I'm, I'm prepping my braids, I just weave everything backwards. So right now, I'm taking out the um, the one I need for my baby hairs. And then section it into the number you want, depending on the size you started with or the size you have in mind. I section from the side and I braid from the back. I can't wait for this voiceover to finish. Today is a Sunday. <laughs> Let's go and beat. Watch what my middle finger is doing. Press down, press down. If not, this extension will frustrate you. Hmm? When you hear frustration post pro max, <laughs> this extension is is too good at frustrating. If you, your gripping game is not at 100, you just want to leave this extension alone and practice until you're there. Okay, so now I'm... Um, Drawing about nine lines at the back. So after drawing the nine lines, you just want to extend it from one side to the other. But I do not need that because I know how to work with this net. I know how to calculate my holes. I know I can see a vertical line on the hole. Okay, just leave, leave that one. I've been working with the net since forever. So I use it for my blunt cut braids. And yes, maybe one of these days, I'll teach you how I do that seamlessly. Okay, so of course you know that there's an extension, there's a line I'm doing beneath the um the, the trap the strap, right? Sorry, the track where I sew the frontal. So that line is gonna be in front of this line I'm making now. And then you want to make sure the braids are at close range because your the crown of your head is the most important part of your wig if it's not a full lace. The crown of your head is the most important part. Yet you don't want it looking bulky. You want to intentionally spread everything professionally. Okay. So see, it's quite in a close range, and I'm gonna be doing this close range up to four to five lines. Pay attention to what my hand is doing. So the external extension you're applying should be rounding these knots that is here. Else, you cannot hold it together to pull off. Do you understand? Make sure it's rounding it. It's laying on the net itself while the, mid, the one you had fixed is in the middle. And um, 
Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Make sure the one, the, the external one you added is wrapping it around tightly. Right? Okay. Notice I'm also working top to bottom. Of course, I told you the crown is the most important part of your frontal or closure wig. Covering your crown is the most important. So I cannot afford to start from the back and then manage whatever is left at um, the crown area. So you want to fill up the crown area first, making sure you're being calculated. First line is finished. You see that same, you see that place I removed the rubber band? Very important at any point, don't mix it. That is your divide. Okay, now look at the spacing. And then make see that what I'm fixing now is in between previous two that are so you want to work in between. When I say alternate when ventilating, you also alternate when breeding. This is what I mean by alternating. Don't do line by line. Make sure one is always falling in between previous two. Okay? And then I think we're rounding up. Always stick to using paying attention to where your middle is and don't mix it up. It allows, it gives your calls life at the end of the day. Get what I'm saying? Okay, so you just want to continue the same spacing pattern until your first five lines, and then you can now space it deeper and making sure you're working in between each. Now, onto the one of the most important parts of this video. When do you know? How do you know when to knot? It's dependent on the number of um, deep pins you want. What I mean by deep pins is the calling system. Hold on. So this is three steps. What we had earlier was five steps. Um, what I wanted is three steps. But you can notice the one close to my hand is not really deep enough. That means it's not really giving me that three. So I'm going to use a few steps backwards and I have my three steps. So please do not braid and then measure. Is it the same length? No. Wherever you're braiding, just braid all the way down. If it's five steps you're working with, look for the calls. When it gives you five steps, that's enough. Tight. If it's four steps you're working with, do the same thing. If it's three steps you're working with, you want to do the same thing. And then your end result is going to be looking as lush as this one. Got it? Okay, guys. Now we've come to the end of this video. Uh, this is what we look like. In a short video, I'm going to be showing you what the honor looked like having this on. Okay? See you guys in my next video and have a great week ahead. Bye-bye.